Having talked about the whole question of physical healing, the following evening, David is joined by Bridget and Adrian, who had a particular question to ask him about his own faith. I mean, you're a very well-known Christian speaker, David, and I think there is a tendency for people to think that people who are prominent in that sense perhaps don't have as many problems as other people. What I'd like to ask you is, I know you've had serious marriage problems mm. at one time or another. I know that for the last few years you've been uh, a depressive, or you've mm. become depressed. And now you have cancer. Mm. Why do you believe in God? <laughs> in the you face of those things, yes. where, where does a loving God fit into um, all I think that? Without a belief in God, I wondered how I could have coped with those problems just in passing. Mm -hmm. But it's worth saying that um, I certainly didn't always believe in God. I was brought up as a Christian scientist, in fact, because my father was a Christian scientist. Mm -hmm. And it was only when he was very seriously ill, when I was 10 years old at the time, he refused medical help because of his convictions and died. And that That's was an interesting parallel. Well, in I, case, you know, it's, it's very similar to my case at the moment, although there are different reasons, of course, mm -hmm. with it. But I'm refusing certain medical help at mm -hmm. the moment. But my mother then had me brought into the Anglican Church. I was done at the age of 10, <laughs> baptized and confirmed. and then really searching through a lot of religious paths because the church seemed to me to be so dead. I just felt, you know, there's no reality here at all. Mm. I turned my back on the whole thing. At the age of 21, I was a, a humanist, an atheist, and a total unbeliever. Mm. And it was only then that things began to, you know, come alive for me. Mm. Now, the, the, the thing that interests me particularly is that one hears a lot of theory about Christianity, doesn't one? And I, I've propounded, pr propounded a lot in my time as well. Um, at the centre of your faith, is there a person? Is there, is there a God who is real to you? It's profoundly real. I, I remember vividly um, sitting at a meeting and someone speaking to me about God as a person who could be known through a personal relationship with mm. Jesus Christ. Now, I was, at the time, at the university studying philosophy and psychology and related subjects. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this person couldn't prove his God. Mm -hmm. And I knew, logically, I couldn't disprove it. I knew, logically, it might be true, it might not be true. I knew, if it's not true, forget it. But if it were true, I knew it was the most important truth in the universe. Mm -hmm. And I chatted with this person over breakfast, and, and we talked about you know, how God could be found. And I felt, well, he made it very clear, so I had to con kind of conduct an experiment in the realm of faith. Mm. And I, one way you can describe this commitment to Christ, I always love the, the marriage analogy. I, I don't know you look back on, on your wedding, but I often think about it in my wedding. And, mm. you know, the vicar just says, um, David, will you have this woman? Mm. I will. Anne, will you have this man? I will. A new relationship is established. Saviour, will you have this sinner? Always, he says, I will. But sinner, will you have a saviour? I might. <laughs> <laughs> but the moment we say, I will, yeah. a new relationship is mm. established. Mm. And essentially, you see, God calls us into a love relationship. Mm. And it shows, doesn't it? I mean, there's something about meeting people who have a genuine love for God. Uh, the reality of it is quite stunning. Just as, I mean, you were talking about the marriage analogy, but I mean, when you see two people who are in love, it jolly well shows, <laughs> you know. God, and it doesn't matter what they say, it shows. Right, and I it. think that it, it is that reality, and you can't prove that sort of yes, love, can you, yes. between, you know, yeah. between a couple of people. There's no proof. It's no, just, right. But it's the, one of the realest things, and everyone knows it is. That's I right. felt a profound yes. compassion for God recently, which I, I, I was very pleased about. It felt so real traveling through beautiful countryside and looking at the hills and the, mm. the trees and I thought you made this unit you did this planet so carefully you must have loved it so much mm. and it must cause you so much heartache that so many things have gone wrong mm. and I thought what a huge loving heart there is in the center of God mm. reaching out to us it's a very profound moment for me I think that the vital thing for me is is not just a a, a vague experience of some sort of ethereal being, but mm. it's rooted in history. I mean, Jesus mm. actually lived in this well, earth. Yes. Mm. He actually died. Mm. And therefore, when mm. I have moments of doubt, as I did with cancer, I come back to the historical facts right. that it's there in history. Mm. And that is absolutely vital, that we're not dealing with some vague thing, but uh, mm. God has actually lived on this earth as, as mm. real as, as you and me. Right. 
And so we know something about God in Jesus.